Hey guys, Richard here with eBike Reviews and Adventures. Today we're going to take a look at the Ingway M20. This is a moped style e-bike and it's, yeah, it's fun. Let's talk about it. Okay guys, a shout out to Ingway for sending me this M20 to test and review. I appreciate their trust in uh, in me and getting to, getting a couple of videos out for them. So this bike, I've had it for just a little while now, been riding it around, and it is a lot of fun. We're just going to show you some close-up shots here. It's fun to ride. It's uh, it's different. You know, it's a little different than some of the other styles that I've had. So let's talk about a couple of things real quick because this thing has a lot of twos in it, okay? We've got two headlights. We've got two batteries. We've got two suspension systems. We've got we've got two handlebar grips. We've got two brakes. We've got two wheels, tire sets. Oh, you get the idea. It is so cool that they gave us two headlights up here. Now, it's daylight, so you can't see too well, but, but I'll tell you, those are some strong headlights right there. One is a lot stronger than probably pretty much any bike that I have tested so far, but they give you two. So kind of a unique look there, having two headlights on the front, you know, just kind of, I don't know, kind of sets it apart a little bit, makes it look different. So go moving around to the side here. We do have some Chow Yang tires, and they got some great knobs on those right there. So these are... 20 by 4 so you know uh, they are the fat tire which we like to have to be able to go off road on shell gravel and things like that like we have on this path right here i like that we have these mag wheels right here that's pretty sharp now i'll tell you out of curiosity i weighed this front tire when i was doing the assembly process and this whole wheel assembly was nine pounds so it kind of tells you that when you have these mag wheels it does add just a little bit of weight to the bike and this bike comes in total uh the website says 104 pounds it does not feel that it does not feel that way at all but well it could be especially since we have two big batteries up there we'll talk about those in a second so uh let's see on the front here we it's talking to the wheels we'll just zip over here we do have these 160 millimeter rotors right here and we do have the mechanical disc brakes right there moving up to the front or uh, this side over here we do have uh, shocks on the front and all the way up here at the very top is where you can adjust your suspension right there Okay, now look at those forks. Those are massive. They go all the way up. That's because they're uh, it's like a motorcycle style fork, right? And it kind of gives you that motorcycle vibe just a little bit not necessarily a moped And let's get see here. So we got the adjustable handlebars right here where you can adjust them You can tilt them back and forth and it's easy if you wanted to, you could add a stem riser here. If you're a taller rider uh, and you want a little more height on the handlebars, you could do that easily right there. Let's take a closer look at the frame for a second right here. Now that frame is kind of interesting because look at that, that's where the banana seat is and it just kind of sticks out there, right? Uh, that is a very robust frame, even with the supports right there. So it's not adjustable, it's not meant to be, but uh, it, it kind of sticks back here over the rear tire, almost like where the rear rack would be, right? So it is just a little bit of a stretch. So when you're riding it, you kind of have to lean forward a little bit to get to the, uh, to get to the handlebars and you kind of lean past this battery right here. You know, it sounds awkward, but it's not. It's, it's a comfortable ride. I've enjoyed it. So moving on back down through here, let's take a look at these batteries real quick because we do have two batteries. These are 13 amp hour batteries each. So this bike has a whopping 26 amp hours of battery. It does have the battery ports right here to charge and you have the on-off switch for both of them, and you do have, um, you know, you can click the button there and see what your battery status is right there, which I never trust that too much. I always pay attention to what the display has. Now, they only give you one charger, uh, so just be aware of that, that, you know, it could take six, eight hours or something to charge up a battery, and you only have one charger. So if you're picking up this bike, you may wanna go ahead and invest in another charger so you can charge both batteries at the same time because they don't balance out when charging. You do, have to, you do have to charge both of them separately. So moving on back here, we do have this shock back here. Now this is a pretty standard shock I've seen on some bikes that, you know, it, it, it does an okay job. It's, it's not, it could be better. Uh, overall, the, the ride is a little stiff, uh, with, even with that shock back there, you know. Uh, we're taking across uh, some rough terrain. Uh, you do feel the bumps pretty good. And it could be that, you know, I need to let some air out of the tires too. That'll help. I don't think this shock is adjustable. Uh, I didn't see an adjustment on there, so I, I don't think that's possible. But, you know, this bike is great for on-road and just light 
uh, maybe some light rough riding, you know, some some light bumps, nothing, nothing too heavy duty. Moving on back down here toward the back here again, we do have metal fenders on the front and also on the rear. And then we have the turning derailleur system back down here. So one thing I'll mention back here since we're here looking at it is just be aware that if you like hauling cargo and hauling stuff, there's no place to attach a rear rack on this bike, okay? So similar to the front up here, um, there's just no room and no connection point to add a front basket. You're not gonna be able to add a rear rack anywhere. So uh, anything you wanna haul or carry, you plan on getting a backpack and carrying it on your back, unfortunately. We do have an integrated rear tail light right there. And this banana style seat, it's, it's firm and it's really thin. And unlike some regular bicycle style seats that sometimes they have the built-in springs or that you can put a suspension seat post, you can't do that with a banana style seat like this. So you get what you get. It's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with it. It's been comfortable. I can get on this and ride down the road 10 miles, 15 miles or something without feeling the need to get off and, and stretch my leg and, and give my rump a, a rest, right? So let's move on up here to the cockpit area. So over here on the left, we do have some nice feeling uh, rubber grips. They don't have the palm rest, but they, got, they give you that rubber feeling. They don't twist or move or anything. So those are really good. I like those. Same thing over here on the, on the right side. But you'll notice over here, this is a full uh, twist. Okay, so you don't have that half twist throttle uh, like you see on some bikes. This is like a motorcycle. This, you got the whole thing here you, that uh, you get to twist uh, in order to uh, power this thing up. And then we have the seven speed Shimano SIS shifter right there. Going back over here, let's take a look at this display because this is worth noting. Now, we do have, whoo, there we go. We do have some clouds and we have a bright sky, so it's kind of hard to see everything right here. But this is a smaller display, right? You have the power button right up here on the top. And right here on the bottom is where you have your plus and minus to change your pass levels. Those are kind of small, okay? Now, they're positioned well because, you know, if your hands are right here, it's easy to reach those small buttons. But it is, it is pretty small compared to other button pads I've seen for other displays. But the button, you know, they're responsive. You don't have to push them very hard or anything to get a response out of them. So that's pretty nice as well. Then the display, it, it shares, you know, it, it shows everything uh, that you need right there. Uh, one thing I don't quite understand is, you know, they've got this, this overlay with these instructions here. And I'm not sure if we can zoom in to see what that says. There we go. Yeah. And this appears to be, you know, imprinted right directly on the glass because, you know, I was trying to remove, thinking it was just a cover over the top of it, and I was trying to remove it. You can't remove it. That's that's permanent. I can't get that off. I had Amanda look at it, my daughter. She uh, she said the same thing. She said, yeah, I think that's permanent. And so it kind of interferes a little bit with, you know, your display and being able to see things. And typically that would be just a film that you could easily pull off, and it just doesn't seem that you can do that with this one. Kind of strange right down here just below all that uh, you do have your headlight button to turn your headlights on and off and you have your born your horn uh, which isn't too aggressive i've heard horns that were really aggressive and i, I don't like that at all okay so that's a look at you know, all of its uh, its features there and uh yeah so overall i like how it looks because it's different all right guys i, I like things that are different they're unique you know they kind of stand out and this one does just that. I mean, look at that. That's a great looking bike right there. And it's fun to ride. Like I said, it's it's nice and nimble. And uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna show you uh, some riding clips of daughter Amanda when she was out riding it. And you'll get to hear what she has to say. And I'll play that for you right now. We don't have anything on that one yet. <laughs> Are you pictures or video? I'm doing video. Because okay. I gotta I, I still gotta make videos for that one and I haven't done it yet. So this will be some of the footage I use. Mm. So get going, I'm gonna ride up beside you and and get some shots of you. Oh.
And I've seen you zipping around here on the uh, the Ingway M, was it, the M20. So tell us how you like it. I like it a lot. Like the yeah. balance is really nice. I don't feel like I'm swerving out of control. Like I, you saw me, I was yeah. going. You were zigzagging yeah, all over the place. I was zigzagging just <laughs> fine. I had full control of the bike. Nice. So, you're, so Amanda currently has a Machwheel Scoria. And I told her and my other daughter that at any point they want to uh, trade up, uh, they're welcome to do that and right now she's thinking she may want to trade up and take this over and uh, let the uh, Mako Scoria go so yeah maybe yeah maybe maybe yeah so we'll ride it a couple more times uh, you know when you come visit and uh, then make a decision yeah absolutely uh, absolutely Woo <laughs> all right all right guys this bike will do 28 miles per hour it does have five pedal assist settings and uh, like I was mentioning in the, a moment ago, everything is easy to reach right here. So you can reach all the buttons just fine. Uh, everything's nice and comfortable here. Let's just get going and uh, we'll take this guy for a ride. I'm going to kick it on up to pedal assist one to get it started. Now you'll notice that the, the motor's a little noisy getting started and then it kind of levels off. The, uh, because of this is a, a banana seat and you can't adjust it at all, it's it makes it a little hard for someone who's really tall like myself. I'm 6'1", and so when I'm out here pedaling, you know, my knees come come up pretty pretty high. And, you know, that's just the nature of the, the design of this bike. That's just the style that it is, so there's not much we can do about that. And that's, uh, you know, that's not knocking in any way anyway at all. Uh, just be aware that if you're a tall rider that you're going to have, you know, your, cheese, your knees coming up to your chest quite a bit. Now, one thing that I... I haven't been able to figure out yet, and that is how to change the kilometers on the display to miles per hour, so it's imperial. I, I don't know how to do that, I haven't figured that out, but right here we're doing 22 kilometers an hour in pedal assist one, and you do need to change to a higher pass level in order to get going faster, because that's full throttle right there, and that's as far as we're going to go. That's full throttle right there, and that's as fast as we can go until we bump it up to pedal assist two. Now this bike is handling very well. Amanda mentioned, when uh, my daughter Amanda was riding it, she mentioned that it just seems to be balanced so well. She's so much more comfortable on this bike than another higher end model that she rides. So she likes it a lot. And I know what she's talking about. It is a, uh, it is a comfortable bike to be riding. You know, you certainly don't feel that 104 pounds that they have advertised. It just, you don't feel that at all. It's, it just it almost seems like that's not quite correct, you know? Now, we're going to go across the grass here and hit some more rough terrain. This is a really rough little field area here. And I can tell you, that, you know, as mentioned, I can really feel the bumps back there in the saddle. Yeah, but it's fun. This bike has, I believe it was, now Ingway advertised that this bike has 55 newton meters of torque. So, you know, this isn't a bike that you're going to be able to take on some bigger hills because it's just not going to have the power to do it, as you can see right there. Yeah, you know, I live in Florida and we don't really have hills, so I can't do a hill test anywhere. But that was just throttle only, and if I'm doing throttle only, you know, this is a this is a really steep grade right here. So when I hit it, you know, the, you can feel here the motor just really kind of bogged down and it wants to slow down a lot. But you know, so that's something that I wish was a little a little higher. Now going across flat ground, going across the grass right here, I'm maxed out in the throttle. We are in pedal assist too. And it's handling this grass just fine. Even if we go up here just a little bit on this little bit of an incline, it handles everything just fine. So yeah, we're going to zip over here, make a sharp turn, see how those tires grip the grass. Yeah, we got a pretty good angle on that there. It did, it did fine there as well. 
So we're going to go ahead and bump this up to, we're just going to rock it up to pedal assist 5. See if it performs any better. So, yeah, so you can hear the, the motor bogging down again in this grass and across this rough terrain. We're actually slowing down quite a bit. You know, we're only at 18 kilometers an hour and that's throttle only, but that's full throttle. That's all I'm getting. So, yeah, pretty low on the, on the torque rating if you ask me. There's thicker grass and it's uh, bogging down again through here. So, really, you know, my personal preference, 80 newton meters of torque is about the lowest you would want. If, if you have hills in your area and it's not just flat ground, you know, this, this may not work out for you so well. Now, I will say this, I'm 245 pounds, so I'm, you know, bigger guy, 6'1". So, you know, this bike is having to uh, carry some extra weight and uh, you know it's doing fine especially if I help it you know doing some pedaling here then it, it, it picks up and goes and and makes it through the, that area just fine but throttle only it, it is struggling just a little bit so let's just stop here for a minute we're gonna leave it in we're gonna leave it in pedal assist 5 and uh, we're just going to do throttle only and, and show you how quickly it, it picks up and goes here. So there's the throttle. You're a little slow. Now we're, now we're getting up. We're at 21 kilometers. 25 kilometers. 28. And that's as far as I can go. I'm going to have to slow down right there. So, yeah. So if you're on level ground or something and you don't really plan to use this uh, for rough terrain, then uh, it's a fun zippy little bike. Amanda sure likes it. She likes it a lot. All right, guys, that's the review for the Ingway M20. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, let me know. Drop them down below, and I will get back to you about that. I'll also have some links down below for you to go and check out some of the specs and take a closer look at this bike for yourself. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe. And until the next video, ride safe.